Hey, Paul Vincent Bernard here. Just want to say a little bit about my name. I'm the only one in the family that got an artist's name. Um, and I've always really liked to use the Vincent part of my name, having nothing to do with Vincent Van Gogh. But anyway, I want to thank Phillips Gallery for putting this show up for me. Kind of an odd time to have a show, the coronavirus show. But the work's here. It looks really great. I'm pleased with the way it looks as a body of work. Most of this work has, has been completed between the years 2010 and 2020, so it's sort of a retrospective. Talk maybe about my influences. As far as themes go, I, I'm very influenced by what I see around me, buildings, landforms, some personal imagery is included, but I go with the really large, minimal form, crowded horizons. I don't really work in a perspective very often, and I don't use the figure very often, though I consider some of my work figurative and some of it I consider landscape, but everything comes from some source, something that I've seen. If we look at the pieces behind me, here are a couple. This is a figurative piece. I just noticed my shadow in, on the sidewalk outside my studio and took a photo of that. And then I worked it into my style of working. That's a large form. It's kind of obscured. This one is a landscape, Permian under blue. Permian is an age in geology. And, you know, in geology, there's a lot of stratification of layers of deposition of, of rock. And that's what the linear horizontals are representing. This piece here, Södermalm, it's in Sweden, just out of Stockholm. And this was a, an elevator that was there. And I was struck by that form. I've got some lithos. My training is in printmaking, and I tend to paint like a printmaker, and everything I do is influenced by my printmaking education. This is actually a lithograph, um, another one of my pseudo-figurative pieces. For me, it is a figure, kind of a shadow figure with that's uh, moving or leaning. The blue is very subtle in the black, so you, unless you see it, you can't really tell that much that it's got that color, which is a way that I like to work with a subtle palette and kind of a narrow selection of colors. I do some things that are have to do with planets or the sun. This is kind of a solar piece. It's called Sunstorm, and for a while I was just really into circles. And this is all tooled aluminum. I work on aluminum plates a lot. And I paint them with an enamel ground. And then I hand tool them with a Dremel. And just line after line after line after line. And for me, it's kind of a meditation. I've always considered my line work sort of a personal and human geology since I'm so enthused by geology and the sedimentation and layers and just line after line after line after line. I use repetition of line a lot. The same with this one. It's, I just like the circle and, and this started in the center and I just went around and around and around and around and around with the Dremel, which took me a very long time. I had this set on a daisy array of some sort so that I could turn it partially and in, engrave the line and then turn it some more and engrave the line and then turn it some more and just continued that out. One thing to know about my work is that through all this repetition at a certain point I have to break free from that, the tedium, and so at the end I just go crazy with more uh, 
unstructured line work. I love to scribble, and I, you'll see that frequently at the edges of my work, just to agitate it, make it more than just that simplistic, minimal uh, effect. This, is, uh, this one, Elegies, is kind of a riff on a Motherwell painting. He did some things called the, the Elegies, and these are similar forms to what he had. Um, and in this piece, you can again see when you, when you come up close, they're very sculptural in a way, and they're, they're very tactile. So the line work is very present, but you can't, you can't see it if you stand back. If you come in close on it, you can see that, and you can see the scribbling. The one thing that I didn't mention is that the darker colors that you see are wiped into the incisions, and the incision is what grabs the color. And the closer the lines are together, the darker the form can be. This is loosely wiped. So it's co I, I actually cover the entire piano with the top color. And then I wipe away everything that I want to be open uh, to be the lighter, the lighter color. These are some more smaller works. I actually work in multiple sizes at once. The larger pieces take so much work that I need a break from those and I need something to happen more quickly because my work does not, hap does not happen quickly. And even the thought process of deciding what I'm going to work on is a lot of, a lot of thinking about what it is that I've seen that appeals to me. This is actually taken from a previous image and I cut, the, cut that down and then started the tooling. I didn't know which, which way was up on this and that actually influences the title because this becomes a planet, possibly, I don't know what these forms are. So it's very obscure and abstract and this does not have a reference as my, many of my other pieces do. But then I gave it the title, World Turned Sideways, because I had to turn it sideways to decide which way was the top of the piece. This is another simple blank form. This is not incised, and it's not on metal. This is on panel. I just drag the color with a, with a small squeegee. Let that dry. I always work with oil. I don't really work in acrylic on any of my paintings. So I have to wait for things to dry. So that's when I go back to the back to the grinding. I have used a tool to incise through the wet paint to create line work. And this also has that scrawly, scribbly edge that I I tend to it's a go to move. This is a piece that I didn't know what the title was going to be, but it reminded me of uh, ships when they're being built. They're kind of propped up in a scaffold or some kind of support. My influence on the shipbuilders is the artist Richard Serra does a lot of work with, with steel, and he grew up in San Francisco, and I think his dad had something to do with the docks, and so when he was growing up, he was always around the docks and the ships. So his sculptures, you will find, are these steel forms that are from his past, and Sarah is a very important influence in my work, and so this is kind of a, a nod to that influence. So this is a lithograph, but it is also incised into the litho plate, then inked up, and the incisions that I had made actually held the ink when I rolled the plate. So it's not really the same process. For me, summer comfort, it was a light weave, and I thought this is like a light blanket that I might have covered myself over with to take a nap in the summer. That's where the title comes from. I don't think it started out as summer comfort when I did the piece. Shift is another geologic reference. Uh, a shift is like we had with this earthquake, 
where the one part of the rock slides down and the other one pushes up. I like a lot of strong verticals and those show up a lot. So this isn't really earthquake material, but it's, that's kind of where that came from. Fractures, I don't know if that's a fractured planet or moving plates or stone out in the front of my yard, which is actually where that came from. This piece, Building the New City, uh, we were in Hong Kong several years ago and I noticed that all of the scaffolding on buildings that were being built or repaired, restored, had bamboo scaffolding. And so this is sort of that. They look like ladders or they could, you know, it's a scaffold. And I, it, this was a fun piece. And that same thing shows up again, scaffold in orange and be, built up and being held in place. It's another vertical piece, 46th Street Solstice. We go to New York quite a lot. On 46th Street at the Solstice, there's a, each year you can see the sun go down just, just like it was an urban Stonehenge. And it will go down, straight down the avenue at the Solstice. And so I called that 46th Street Solstice. This is another divided set of columns, Wyoming Divide. In Wyoming, there's a place where, where there's a big gap in the rock where a river comes through. And once again, Eye of the Needle is a similar thing, like a set of gates, and there's this little thin slit through there. And the Eye of the Needle is a biblical reference about uh, a camel could not go through the eye of the needle because it was too big. So this fence line is a reference to the demilitarized zone in South Korea, between South and North Korea. Uh, we were there a couple of years ago and um, I was very taken by the austerity of that fence, which isn't just at the zone, but as you're going on the highway up there, this fence just along the seaside just goes on for miles and miles and miles and miles. And it's uh, little, it's very surreal to see that kind of division and um, separation between a border. This piece is another example from Hong Kong. There was a marquee that was being rebuilt outside an old building in the middle of the city. So this was the, uh, my take on the structure of the scaffold and support that was holding this to the building as they were getting ready to restore it or rebuild it. I've always been taken by um, the form of the spiral jetty. I just love the form. This piece took me three or four years to complete. Not solid, it would just sit. It's got more line work than anything, especially for the size of the piece. It's called Flotsam and Jetty because there's all this debris out here, which I understand there's all kinds of really interesting and odd things in the lake out there. Besides the jetty, when the water comes down or goes up, it's just a different experience every time. So that's, that's that piece. I, this was a lot of fun to do, but <laughs> I don't know how many hours of work because I, I had to redo the surface multiple times to get it to where I felt like it was finished. And then this is the last piece it's actually the first piece in the show, um, and it's the last piece that we're talking about. And it, this went through a lot of different stages, and it finally just became, uh, it's called liturgy, and it finally just became about kind of like cathedral windows.
but not, and I like the asymmetry of it. You know, if you go into a cathedral, the array is not like this, but this was my array. And thank you very much. I think we ran out.